Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Release the harvest. On yesterday's program, Pastor Benny Hinn began the latest message in his teaching series on releasing the anointing in your life by examining the second key, which is the power of prayer. The Lord has offered us full partnership in His plan for humanity. We have full partnership with God. God makes the decision. Watch this. But the responsibility and the authority for the enforcement, for the administration of these decisions, He's placed on our shoulders. God literally makes the decision, but tells the church, I will not move till you pray. You are to enforce that decision with the authority I give you. If you don't enforce that, I will not fulfill my decision. Now join Pastor Benny in his recent Monday night service in California as he concludes this powerful teaching. Heaven holds the keys by which decisions governing earthly affairs are made but we hold the key by which those decisions are implemented. They cannot be impl implemented without us. Therefore, prayer is implementing God's decisions. Prayer implements God's decisions. Prayer does not force Him into those decisions. He already has decided. Prayer simply implements it. So it's not twisting his arm to do something. He's already decided to do it. Looking for a partner to say, I'm with you, Lord. Let's do it together. Say, I'm God's partner. No angel was ever offered to share in this high privilege, only the saints. We come and say, Father, what, did you, what have you decided? God says, I've decided to do ABC. We go and pray ABC and it'll happen. We enforce it. We implement it with prayer. If you understand what I've just been saying, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Therefore, you're responsible for every decision God has made already, and it is your prayer that implements those decisions on the earth. God decides to visit a nation. He waits till we pray before He visits the nation. God decides to heal you, but nothing happens till you ask Him to heal you. God prepares all heaven, all angels to come and protect you, but he'll not do it till you ask him to protect you. He releases angels only when you ask him to release, to release those angels. Then we praise him, we exalt him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about this. Imagine this, will you? The fate of the world is in your hands. Lift those hands and say, the whole world. The fate of the world. The future of mankind is in my hands. Say it again. Say it again. The future of mankind is in my hands, people. That's why we have great responsibility to enforce God's authority. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, then I'll hear from heaven. Then I'll forgive sin and I'll heal the land when they ask me. It's time for you to pray for America. Pray for the coming election. If you pray, God will do it. If you don't pray, He won't. It's your decision to pray your family into the kingdom. Remember what I said. Prayer fulfills the plan of God. Prayer fulfills prophecy. 
Prayer implements God's decisions on the earth. Anybody getting this? The fate of the world is in our hands. Look at the power, the awesome power you have. Psalm 149, verse 9 through verse, uh, verse 5 through 9. Are you getting anything? Yeah. 149, verse 5 through 9 says this. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Come on, let's read together. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Next verse. And a two-edged sword in their hand. Next verse. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon... That's coming out of your lips. Power you have in your lips. Verse, verse 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Verse 9. To execute upon them the judgment written, This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. It's your, it's your, it's, 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 that's your authority. This honor only have the saints. Not the angels, not the world. Only the saints have this honor. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall arise against thee in judgment, thou shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Only the servants of God have that power. Every time the devil speaks against you, you speak and break his words. And when you speak, those words of the devil are broken. You have to speak it to break them. If you don't speak it, it won't happen. Power is in your mouth. Life in your mouth. Death in your mouth. It's time to speak power. It's time to speak life. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Well, you decide then, don't you? The power that is yours is awesome. Say awesome power. Okay. Now, why has God chosen to work this way? Because in Genesis 1.26, He said, let them have dominion. He made that decision for you. That dominion was lost, then restored through the cross. Now, we find something very important. The Bible continually ties dominion to prayer. God says, let them have dominion. But later we find in the New Testament and the Old Covenant that dominion is tied to prayer. God makes the decision, and then he says, all right, I will give dominion to only those who pray. Say, I have dominion, I have dominion. but I got to pray. So it says in Luke, please write this down, Luke 10, 19, I give you authority, but Luke 10, verse 2 says, pray. You pray, you get it. You don't pray, you don't get it. I repeat, God gives us the dominion in Genesis 1.26, but He ties it. It's dependent upon prayer. You got to pray it before you release it. So Luke 10.19 says, you have power, but Luke 10.2 says, you got to pray. Put uh, on the screen... Luke 10, verse 2, because i got to see this. you got to see this. Therefore, said he to them, the harvest truly is great. The laborers of you, pray therefore. Here it is. got to pray. When you pray, then you read verse what? Come on, go down to verse 19. Same chapter, verse 19. Says, I give you power. But first, got to pray. Verse 2 says, pray. Verse 19 says, power comes after you pray. We see the same thing in Romans 8, 26, Romans 8, 37. Romans 8, 26, prayer is mentioned. Romans 8, 37, you're more than conqueror. But you cannot be more than a conqueror till you pray. Because it says we have to pray in the Spirit. And after you pray, you receive power to become more than a conqueror. 
Hello? So, this is something we see in the Bible continually. We have the Lord's position, the Lord Jesus' position on the earth. Yet we cannot operate in his dominion without prayer. We have his position, yet we cannot operate in it without prayer. That's awesome. Say, I have his position. Uh, but I cannot function in it without prayer. Now, I hope this is getting through to you. Isaiah 45, verse 11 says, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and daughters. Now, that's prayer. And then he says, Now, command me. Ask me before you command me. Isaiah 45, 11, Ask me of things to come. Then command me. You cannot release the power till you pray. That's incredible power. Oh, wow. The Bible tells us that even the Son of God had to pray before he received authority. Hebrews 5, 7 says that. Will you please look at that with me on the screen? Hebrews 5, 7 tells us that only through prayer he, he received authority. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with strong crying and tears to him that was able to save him from death, and he was heard in that he feared. There was no authority without prayer in his life. He was heard. Saved from death. That's the power. But he wasn't saved till he prayed. There was no power released till he prayed. Paul Bilheimer was a great saint of God. In fact, I met him here in California years ago. Here's what he said. He said, the prayer closet is the arena in which God produces overcomers. Aha. Uh -huh. Prayer, the prayer closet is the arena which produces overcomers. That's where God produces overcomers, is in that closet. So our main business is prayer. That's what releases the power of God. E.M. Bounds, one of the greatest writers on prayer, said, God shapes the world by prayer. Isaiah 66 verse 8 says, As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth children. Without travail, there's no birth. Isaiah 66, 8. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth children. Now, there's something really remarkable. Would you turn to Revelation 22, 17? I want to show you something. Something stunning, in fact. God has chosen to save no souls till the church travails. This is awesome. Oh, my God. If the Spirit of God is not wooing, it's because the church is not praying. Now, you look at that verse real close, all of you. And the Spirit and the bride say, come. That's prayer. We are calling on God to come. That's prayer. We are saying, come, Lord Jesus, right? That's prayer. Let him that heareth say, come. That's the church still praying. Let him that is a thirst come. Now, watch this. This is a wonderful line here. And whosoever will, let him take of the waters of life freely. That's people saved. They cannot take the waters of life freely till we pray, come Lord Jesus. That's awesome. I said that's awesome. We have to pray before they can receive the waters of life. They cannot be saved without us praying. 
Isn't that strong? So God has chosen to save no soul till the church travails. If the Holy Spirit is not wooing, it's because the church is not praying. And if the Holy Spirit does not woo, the soul is lost. The Spirit and the church say come. We pray in the Spirit, you see. That's the kind of prayer God listens to. The Spirit of God is praying through the bride of Christ that says, come. I unite my life with the Holy Ghost. I'm praying in the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is praying through my life. Come, Lord Jesus. And he that hears comes. Here's who. When I pray, the Holy Spirit will touch them to hear his voice. But Hallelujah. Now, let him that is a thirst come. If I am not praying, nobody who is thirsty can come and receive the waters. And if I am not praying, saying, come Lord Jesus, then it's impossible for those whosoever will. They cannot come either. They cannot come and receive freely. It's my prayer, therefore. It's my prayer that brings souls into the kingdom. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth children. So, by our intercession or lack of intercession, we hold the power of life or death over the souls of men. My intercession releases life. The lack of it releases death. Life and death are in the power of the tongue of the intercessor. That's what it means, by the way. When it says life and death are in the, in the power of the tongue, what tongue? The praying tongue. That puts a brand new light on it, you know. Amos 9.13 says, the greatest harvest will come because of prayer. Turn that on, please. Amos 9.13. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that the plowman. Who's the, the plowman? It's the prayer man. He, anybody plowing is praying. When you plow, you pray. That's what it means to plow. The days will come that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of, of grapes him that sows seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine. Here's that revival. Revival comes because somebody's plowing. Hallelujah. The anointing came upon Elisha while he was plowing. Elijah put his mantle on him while he was plowing. When you plow, you get a mantle. How many are ready to plow? First Kings 19, he was plowing and the mantle came on him. God is about to put a mantle on every man who plows. So what must we do? Let me give it to you real fast. Write them down. Number one, prepare your heart. Before you can call on God, prepare your heart. Job 11, 13. How do you prepare your heart? With the word of God. That's how the anointing flows. Nehemiah 1.6 says, you have to desire to be heard. Please look up those scriptures, read them later, okay? Nehemiah 1.6 says, we desire to be heard. So first, Job 11.13, as you call on God, first prepare your heart. Number two, desire to be heard. Nehemiah 1.6. Number three, Genesis 32, 9 through 12. Use the word of God when you pray. Use his word. Let me show you that really quickly. Uh, Genesis 32, verse 9 through 12, because it's so powerful. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, the God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said that unto me. There it is. He reminded God of what he said to him. Use the word God gives you. He said, you said to me, return. So, you cannot pray till you prepare your heart, Job 11. You cannot pray till you desire to be heard, Nehemiah 1.6. You cannot pray without using the word. You say, Father, you told me, you said to me. A and you cannot pray till all sin is confessed. Psalm 66.18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So, you've got to confess your sin. 
Number five and finally, all idolatry must be destroyed in your life. Jeremiah 11, 11 through 14, idolatry must be destroyed before God will hear that prayer in your life. You heard tonight some secrets of the kingdom. Are you ready to see it happen in your life? Lift your hands and thank God. It's coming your way. Hallelujah. To Jesus be the praise for the anointing I'm sensing in this studio. You sweet people have just heard the word of God on, on, the, on the anointing. Dear Todd is here. We just finished a half hour program. I'm still feeling it all over me. Todd, it's all yours. Come on, talk Amen. to the people. It was strong. Psalms chapter 23 is David's testimony of the goodness of God. And boy, it's still on me right now. My older brother passed away at 56. I sat in the funeral home and I was going to teach on Proverbs chapter 4. I got up as a, a second afterthought and I began to teach Psalms 23. As I began to teach Psalms 23, I saw what I had never seen before. I began to realize that this was not something you preach at funerals. This was David's personal testimony about the goodness of God. David was a shepherd boy. David understood the responsibility of being a shepherd. He understood all that entailed in being a good shepherd. And when he began to talk about God, he related to God as being a good shepherd. You know Psalms chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside calm waters. He restores my soul. We know the scripture. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he'll be with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Why? Because the rod beat off enemies and the staff guided them. He said, God anoints me with oil. My cup runs over because God is a good God. He's good. He's good all Amen. the time. Amen. He's not good part of the time. He's good all the time. And as David began to understand the goodness of God. Read the Psalms. David's always talking about the goodness of God. To have great faith, to move into levels of faith, you've got to understand this about the character of God, that He's good. He's good. Not part of the time, not some of the time. Everything good has come from God. Amen. And everything bad has come from the devil. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing today. But there's a powerful anointing on my life right now yep. for breakthrough, for turnaround. Talk quickly about the covenant faith and the harvest. Three things always on the mind of God. Covenant, faith, and harvesting. It was God's idea to establish a covenant so he could bless us. How do we access the covenant? Through faith. By believing Him. God says if you'll believe Him, there's nothing He won't do. And number three, harvesting is always on the mind of God. Why? Because He's a good God. He doesn't describe Himself as God of the seed. He says, I'm Lord of the harvest in Luke 10 too. God always is thinking about a harvest. That's why I want to pray for you today. Because in order to access a harvest from God or access the covenant of blessings that God's promised you and I as a believer, we have to do it by faith. How do we do it by faith? The Bible says in Genesis 8, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatever you sow, you'll reap. Luke 6, 38, give and it'll be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, will God give to those who give. Malachi 3, will a man rob God, yet you rob me of tithes and offerings? Return the tithe and the offering. See if I won't open the windows of heaven and Amen. pour you out a blessing. Amen. Why? Because he's a God that's good. I want to pray for a very specific seed that I never talked about until this year. Open doors, promotion, favor. Amen. Debt-free cancellation. It's your year Amen. for financial blessing. And it's accessed through the covenant by faith. Because he's a God that thinks about harvest. It's a $360 
seed. Can you believe for the people for property too? Yeah, I believe with you for property because I believe this is a year that God wants you to own your home. God wants to give you your dream home. If anybody should own property, it's the believer. The first gift God gave Adam and Eve was property in Genesis. And, and Abraham. And Abraham. And Isaac. All and property, Jacob. All property. And God wants to give you property. I'm going to ask you to activate the covenant. Activate the harvest. Access what I'm saying. Believe the words that I'm speaking by sowing a $360 turnaround seed. You Why say, $360? Well, it's a dollar a day. If harvest is always on the mind of God, then when you plant a $360 seed, that means you have a dollar a day in the ground. And for those that cannot give the 360. If you do 30 a month each month for 12 months. Perfect. Father, I release it Amen. in the name Lord. of Jesus. Lord, I release this in the name of Jesus. Mom, Lord, this Mom. is a word that I've spoken. The $360 turnaround seat is a prophetic yes. word. It's a powerful word. It's a word that's going to activate the harvest. And I decree over your life today in the name of Jesus for favor, for open doors, for real estate miracles, for property. I decree for radical amounts of money like you've never known to come into your life as you obey the voice of God and you plant the dollar a day, the $360 seed. In Jesus' name, according to the Word of God, I'll let go of a seed and God will let go of a harvest. Amen. Before amen. you go, I'm feeling the anointing here. Stretch your hands towards me right now. In yes. Jesus' name, yes. you sweet people. On, In the name of Jesus, we come into agreement right now, Lord. Right now, right now, right now. Everyone who will sow seed today yes. or sow it over the next 12 months yes. will see property, abundance, debt cancellation. In Jesus' mighty name. People, I'm telling you, I'm feeling mm. a strong anointing. It's powerful. Receive it in the name yes. of Jesus. Glory to God. Be the greatest share of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything the enemy took from you is coming back twice mm. in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. And Lord, new property for your people in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, you saw that seed right now. It's yeah. strong here. Yeah. It's really strong. Call the number on the screen. Do it online. You can text it in, BHM45777. Please follow me on Periscope soon on Facebook Live. But you sow that seed right now and watch what God will do with you. This has been amazing. Amen. Thank God Amen. for the anointing on you. You sweet saints, you keep sowing that seed. And believe God, praise Him right now. Just audibly praise Him. Yes. So, Lord, yes. I thank you. Yes. This is the best year of my life. I thank you. I'm going to get yeah. a new home. Yeah. Yeah. I praise you're going to get new yeah. land, new property. Yeah. There's a pastor praying for new land so you can build a new sanctuary. It's coming in the name of the Lord. I agree. I agree. Amen. Keep calling, and we'll see you tomorrow for another fantastic program. Amen.